Hi, uh, I'm Rob Shaw with uh, Mountain Athlete and Military Athlete, and this is Jordan Smotherman. He's my assistant coach, and we're going to talk today a little bit about, in general, just squatting. And uh, understand that uh, from our perspective, um, we're only interested in outside performance, and so we squat in the gym, not to lift more weight in the gym, but to make outside performance better. But when it comes to squatting, um, one of the interesting things you notice about it is the first thing you feel when you're squatting isn't your legs, it's your midsection. Either in a front squat, you buckle forward, or in a back squat, your hips come up too high and you fall forward. And I just want to just show you a real good example of what a difference that squatting form can make. And uh, so Jordan's just going to, he's just going to, both Jordan and I are going to face this direction, and we're both going to get in a squat position. Jordan is, a, is an excellent athlete. He's probably the best athlete I have here in the gym. He's also a great coach. And you'll see in the bottom of this, hopefully, how much more vertical Jordan's back is in the squat position compared to mine. So just go ahead and squat down for it. So you can, I just know right now that Jordan's back is more vertical than mine. You can go ahead and stand up. So my, my max squat clean is like 195 and Jordan's is what? Uh, squat clean like 245. Liar. <laughs> What's interesting is the more vertical that Jordan's back is, Remember that what fails in the squat first is not your legs, it's your core. The more vertical I can get an athlete's back, the stronger I can get his legs. Because more of that weight is, is uh, concentrated on his spine, on his bones, and his core isn't as uh, stressed to come forward. And so I could argue right now that my legs are strong as Jordan's, but he can squat more because he, he has a... a a more uh, a better squat. Anyway, what we're trying to do as we develop this is try to get that squat position, that back, uh, more vertical in the bottom position. One of the things that's interesting with having that good squat form or that back more vertical is there's an incredible correlation between having a vertical back and injury, especially in the lower back. If you can imagine that Jordan is a skier and he goes and, uh, or I guess I'll, here, I'll, I'll, jump, I'll go first. Let's say I'm a skier in my squat form. I come off a cliff to huck a cliff, and I land, I come forward like this. That's a lot of stress on my lower back right there. Any time I land, or I'm a soldier and I, I parachute and I land, or I jump and I land, or I go to pick something up and my back's all over and rounded. You can see how that can affect. Um, that's going to stress my lower back and possibly lead to injury. Whereas uh, if Jordan goes ahead and, uh, and jumps or squats, uh, or lands, his back's going to be more vertical and there's going to be less stress on his lower back. And it, it's just a good squat form is a great indicator of uh, being more durable and less prone to injury in the squat, I mean in, uh, in the lower back and doing outside activities. Now I want to talk to you about how we can fix squat form. And there's some different theories about this and we use different techniques to do it. Um, so um, go ahead and hop in there and just do a couple front squats, Jordan. You can see in the front quad position how vertical his back's going to be in the bottom. And go ahead and rack it. And then I'll go ahead and do that. And you can see how much more counter forward my back is when I'm going squat. Again, the more vertical I can get the athlete's back in the bottom position, the stronger his legs can be. Now some coaches would argue that the reason you can't get in a good squat form is because there's some type of hamstring flexibility issue or uh, low back flexibility issue or ankles. And I'm not one of those coaches. I don't, flexibility, I don't think flexibility has a good, a good measurement or a good test or I guess a limiting factor in terms of squat form. And the reason I do that is I'm going to have you uh, use that board as a wall for me. I can get in a perfect squat form laying on my back. I'm going to put that board up against my feet like it's a wall. So right here, if I was front squatting, this is the perfect squat form. I've got my, my back is perfectly straight. My, uh, my legs are up. My hips are below my knees. My feet are straight ahead. So there's no flexibility issue for me in getting in this position. So how come I, go ahead and sit down. How come I can't get in that position when I'm standing up? There's one theory uh, that says the reason I can't do it is based on patterning. And that um, uh, my body has forgot how to squat and I need to reteach it. And that's the one that we kind of buy into the most. One of the tricks that we can do to help the athlete do that is to use the board with, with heels. 
Jordan, go ahead and squat there. Jordan, you can go ahead and squat without the board. You see how vertical his back is? Without it. Yeah, without it. And then I'll use the board and you'll see how vertical I can get. Good. Now, when I have the board underneath my heels, see how much more vertical my back is than if I don't have it? It's pretty obvious. It should be pretty obvious. I can feel it. Why does the board help? The reason is, is that my body has forgot to learn how to squat. And when I get down to that bottom position, I think I'm going to fall backwards, and therefore I counter forward. My weight goes forward. Jordan's a better athlete than me, a better natural athlete, and he hasn't forgotten that. We use our patterning movements, like squat to stand, as a way to repattern this movement. We have athletes like me sometimes, when I, or even sometimes I'll use a board to put my heels on when I'm squatting, or many of our other athletes have squat issues. Uh, it just helps keep that back vertical. The squat to stand exercise is a patterning movement, and the theory is that the reason, one of the reasons that I'm not uh, getting a good squat position is there's something in my midsection that's not turning on. When you do the squat to stand movement, you press into the ball, and what that does is it tightens your midsection up. And then you can pull your butt down, pull, 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 and then hand up, hand up, and stand. And this kind of tricks your body and turn that midsection on and helps you get in that good squat position. I need the board to do it. Uh, Jordan, go ahead and try a squat to stand without the board. You can probably do it and get a nice vertical back. One, one thing on the squat to stand to remember is that you're not pushing into it with your triceps, you're pulling down into it with your core. So my arms are locked out and then I pull down into it and that engages my core. What you're looking for in the bottom position when he puts his hand up, his hands up, is his hands to be over his feet. See how his hands are over his feet? That's what you want. That's where you want the bottom position. I'll go ahead and try it without the board, and you'll see how far I am from that. I get my hands over my feet, not by pushing my arms back, but by getting my back more vertical. It all comes back to getting that back vertical. So I don't even know if I'll be able to do this. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'm not, I'm not even able to do it without falling back. Anyway, the squat to stand, the way we progress the squat to stand, is by lowering the, the angle of the ledge. I can do a better squat to stand with this high 2x4. This is 2x6. Now I can get in that position good. Where I'll go to next is maybe a 1x4, or a 1x6, a smaller ledge, and then a smaller ledge and a smaller ledge. Anyway, the whole key to the squat is to get that back as vertical as possible. The more vertical the back, the, more, the stronger I can get your legs because your midsection is not going to collapse. The more vertical the back, the less prone you are to lower back injuries because when you take a landing, when you need to lift something, it's your spine, your bones are taking that stress and not your midsection, especially your lower back. And go. So we, we talked about the squat to stand. Um, that's one way to teach your body to engage your core at, at the initiation of the squat and, and throughout the squat movement. Another great patterning movement that we've used here uh, with, with a lot of success has been the third world stretch. Uh, the third world stretch, um, first of all, it, it forces you at the bottom of the movement to engage your hip flexors um, and your core to pull you, you down um, in terms of like getting your butt to your heels and it keeps your, your upper body nice and erect. Um, so whenever, we're, whenever we approach the, the third world stretch, um, you, want your, you want your hands together and we're trying to keep you Ideally, you'll, you'll be in the same, you'll have the same posture in the squat position as you do when you stand up. Uh, so we'll, we'll have you put your hands together, assume a normal, stand, uh, normal squat stance, and then slowly lower down into it, keeping your torso nice and erect and weight on your heels. So my first movement is pushing my butt back. Now, whenever I get here, I'm actively pulling in with my hip flexor muscles here to pull my butt towards my heels. And this gets my chest up. So I'm activating and it flexes my core. So I'm using my hips to activate everything else uh, in my, in my uh, midsection to get my chest high. Uh, another thing, another sort of supplemental benefit of the squat to stand is whenever, I mean, I'm sorry, of the third world stretch is whenever you get in this position and you, you use your hands to pry your knees out. This sort of loosens up those adductors uh, in your, in your uh, inner thigh that's going to help you keep your knees out as you come up from the squat. So not only here, not only do we want you pulling your butt to your heels, but we also want you loosening up those adductors by using your hands, kind of like a jack, 
to, to spread your knees apart and keep them out as you come up. And it's gonna teach you how to engage this whole midsection in the bottom of the squat whenever you're having to generate the most torque to get out of the hole on a front squat or, or even on a back squat. The thing about that third rule stretch is it's just like the squat to stand, there's a way to progress it. You've already seen me try to squat and I can't get down to that position, but I can also use the board or heel ledge to progress the third world stretch. What you don't want to be is down in this position like this. This isn't the third world stretch. See my back is all arched over and stuff like that. I want my back to be as vertical as possible. When I get on the two by four, now I can get down there, now I can get in this position, my back is fairly vertical. I can push out. And then as I progress, I can drop the ledge and get to a, sh a shorter ledge and keep on going. So if you can't do it on the ground like I can't, get on the ledge and it'll help you. Austin.